Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. For this week, I have something a little different for the channel. Normally I review companies that are already public on the market, but I decided to kick off a new series with discussing upcoming IPOs as well. The reason being, because I couldn't pass up an opportunity to research and talk about Palantir, one of Silicon Valley's most mysterious and secretive companies. The very fact that they're IPOing soon is still surprising, after years of teasing the rumor. The company has confidentially filed the paperwork without much detail, and they'll possibly do a direct listing, just like Spotify and Slack have done in the past. Before I get into the video, like always, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button and bell notification if you haven't already. Give the like button some love, and feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Patient Mindset, for frequent posts and opinions on the market. In fact, I just recently did an online booklet giveaway that I personally designed and published on how I made a 1,000% return recently with options. Alright, so now the mystery of Palantir. If you didn't know, the name is actually based on powerful seeing stones from the Lord of the Rings series. And the actual company isn't really that far off when it comes to seeing almost everything. Palantir software provides the broadest analysis for their customers' database to pinpoint exactly what they're looking for. The key people behind this founding were Peter Thiel and Alex Karp. Besides Palantir, Peter is known for co-founding PayPal and other hedge funds. He was also Facebook's first outside investor back in 2004, growing his initial stake to over billions of dollars before selling it off. Alex Karp, on the other hand, is the current CEO, and he's more on the secretive side. Seriously, taking a look at his wiki profile and you will not find much. You only learn more about him through news articles or video interviews on YouTube. And from what I found, he fits the definition of many eccentric CEOs, like Elon Musk or Jack Dorsey. Entrepreneurs that don't fit the common norm. Alex personally describes himself as a socialist. He's a meditation fanatic who also happens to keep swords at his office. And he receives many death threats from extremists that he has to have a bodyguard around him 24-7. Crazy, right? Well, the reason being, Palantir has been involved with lots of controversies over the years, especially because of their close working relationship with law enforcement and the federal government. Let's take a look at some of their notable customers, which you'll notice are mostly government related. They do have commercial customers as well, but most of that information is private in terms of the work they do, and Palantir is just known more so for their federal business. The CIA, FBI, and NSA all collect data for high-profile cases with Palantir. The U.S. Special Operations Command is in charge of the branches, like the Army, Marine Corps, and the Air Force, alongside the U.S. Military Academy, aka West Point. They're all tied to Palantir in one way or another. The Recovery, Accountability, and Transparency Board works to prevent waste and mismanagement, and this year they're actually working with Palantir to detect fraud and federal stimulus spending. The Securities Investor Protection Corporation is a prime example that uses data for monitoring stocks and bonds. And in fact, they were successfully able to convict the notorious Bernie Madoff and his Ponzi scheme with Palantir's technology. Lastly, the LAPD is an example of one of many law enforcement departments that also works with Palantir for criminal data integration and analysis solutions for private investigations. Now, I know that I keep emphasizing heavily on government defense and law enforcement, but don't get me wrong, their technology can do a lot in other industries as well. You gotta understand that data is slowly becoming digital gold, and there's just a lot you can do with it in terms of building insights and solutions for problems you didn't even know you had. AI and machine learning is purely data-based, which helps with learning and making predictions. The automotive and manufacturing industry are utilizing data to detect defects on products built in the assembly line. Cybersecurity and intelligence is getting more important as many of the products we use are in a 100% digital landscape, where data being in the wrong hands could seriously be a threat. Shipping and logistics requires attention to supply chain, and data helps them monitor work orders and timing for shipping containers. Legal work, healthcare, and sales are all people-focused. These fields require understanding patterns of human behavior to get a full-scope view. Now that you know the different industries Palantir is involved in, let's take a closer look at the actual business model. Keep in mind that privately it's estimated Palantir is valued around $20 billion, but this will change significantly depending on how much they raise at IPO. 
The two main products responsible for revenue generation are Palantir Gotham and Palantir Foundry. No, Gotham is not connected to Batman whatsoever. But judging from the name, it could have been inspired by the series. And you already get a sense that's focused on defense and security. It's the government backside of their business, used for investigations and top secret missions. Palantir Foundry, on the other hand, is enterprise facing, and data is often used for pinpointing areas like sales opportunities, for example. Like I said before, there isn't as much public information on the commercial side, which means we'll have to wait till IPO to be able to start listening into shareholder meetings. But some big companies I did find in the news reports include Airbus, BP, Credit Suisse, and many more. Palantir Gotham can come into an organization and essentially become the brain. Integrating an organization's existing data, the software uses intelligence and insights to model assets for solving problems. Simply, think of a physical bulletin board that's shown in detective and crime shows. It's connected by little pins and strings to different pieces of information. Now imagine a digital version of that, integrating the data of people, organizations, places, documents, and events that are all mapped together. Overlooked connections, not often seen by humans, on a physical bulletin board can now be identified by powerful software. Normally this kind of work used to take years manually, but Palantir claims to get the job done within weeks from when the project starts. A unified search and discovery means there's a single point of search for all the data resources. This ensures anyone sifting through the data is shown what's relevant upon command. Knowledge management is taken very seriously by the company, with enhanced security and measures in place. Project data is not published until it's meant to be released, and every step is automatically logged and traced back to the user involved, ensuring secure collaboration. Every piece of data is highlighted by certain classifications, where certain level attributes need to exist to view it. For example, let's say an entry level associate is working with a top level manager. Both will have access to the data and both will be monitored by an audit log. But their specific data views might be different, altering specific details. For example, like full subject names for the manager to view, whereas the associate might see something a little bit more vague than that, like subject initials instead. This is to allow insight sharing to be customizable, and the client leads can choose to do so however they like. Lastly, extensibility and APIs means Palantir Gotham works with different languages and different external systems. This open source capability gives engineers the power to use data more meaningfully to what they need. And it also gives Palantir free insight on how their product is being used for different purposes. I've also added some cool graphics, courtesy of Palantir's website. This provides a good visual of all the points I just mentioned before. With graphing, users can visualize orders of events, connections, and different networks. Mapping then allows data to be tracked to different sources. The Object Explorer lets you filter as many data objects in your project, querying the results within seconds. And the browser application is where most of the final insights are documented, so you have everything in one place. Highlighting key points and questions to ask. This specialized browser is where users go back to when they're doing investigations especially. Titan is the next generational release for Palantir Gotham that's built on insight and data collection for the past 10 years. Now when it comes to data, the intelligence of the system only gets better with time and data ingestion. This is exactly how machine learning works for AI, self-driving for cars, and simply anything that's trying to achieve autonomy. Palantir is making Gotham better with a fresh new design based on user feedback for the past decade, including new search features, modules, AI implementation, and so much more. We're living in a data-driven world, and every year the amount of data we have is increasing at insane amounts. Right now, we've only unlocked a decent percent of what we can do with that data. But data-involved companies are now learning more, and they're ahead of the game with what they can achieve. Palantir Foundry is the other side of their business, more focused on the commercial side. Many companies have data sources that are messy and need something that's more scalable for data integration. Essentially, as companies grow from startups to corporations over time, the generated data can become very challenging to use. While Gotham is more investigation-based, Foundry focuses on more broad purposes, 
Simply any user within an organization can combine data insights into their daily work. This can be important decisions around profitability, expenditures, you name it. There's four core pillars for this. Data security, which I've stressed the importance of many times. This is Palantir's pride and why they trusted so much on their government focused side to provide testimony for their commercial side. Business ontology, which means building a common model for an organization to customize what's understandable for them. So let's say if a company doesn't want data in the form of spreadsheets or columns, that's okay. And they can pick the best visualization metrics for them to use. Analytical diversity refers to combining AI and machine learning for quality data assessment, as making predictions for certain business decisions outcomes is invaluable. And finally, openness, which highlights the value of existing IT investments the client might already have. Foundry can plug into many third-party softwares, and it picks up the work that's already been done, so there's no worry about having to start over on a clean slate again if switched to Palantir. Now that I've covered their main products, I do want to touch up on Palantir in the media. It's a very controversial company, especially because of how they differentiate from the typical Silicon Valley culture. While many tech companies don't like to cooperate with the government, Palantir goes all in. From working with ICE in the past to even more recently supporting a COVID-19 data tracking contract, Palantir is at the top of the list for companies that investors will either respect or despise. The company has still not achieved annual profit, and they follow the growth philosophy, in which they'll consistently reinvest their money to improve their software. If you invest based on humane ethics, then you've probably boycotted data harboring companies like Facebook and Amazon from your portfolio. And truth be told, Palantir isn't that far off from being the king of all things data. But if you invest solely on no emotions, then this company will be an interesting bet. Palantir has already raised billions of dollars privately, and there's a reason why the folks believe in the product. With consistent demand for the software, especially from the government, and being involved in some of the most high-profile investigations this country has ever seen, you can bet all of Wall Street has eyes on this to see what's Palantir's ultimate master plan for the future. Some public companies that could be considered competitors of Palantir include Splunk, Alteryx, and Salesforce, more specifically for their acquisition of Tableau. I would say they compete indirectly when it comes to commercial customers, as all of their products involve data, but for varying functions. But with government-related work, none of them have the history and client experience that Palantir does to excel at investigating events or people. But Alteryx, Splunk, and Tableau are probably the better bet at examining consumer behaviors based on an optimized workflow of data. When Palantir does become public, these are companies that I'll be watching, especially to see how and if they're affected in terms of market share expansion or slowdown. I currently don't have a position at any of them, and Palantir could be the first database company that I buy if the IPO price is attractive. That's all folks for this IPO watch list. I really hope you enjoyed this new mini-series, and I appreciate you being patient with the videos. Right now, I rely on a full-time job and active investing to take care of my expenses. As the channel grows, I would love to focus more of my time on frequently posting. But as of now, this is more so a time-to-time -time hobby that isn't necessarily profitable for me. I simply enjoy sharing my insights from investing, and hope to teach something to at least one brand new investor every time. If you liked the video, please share it with your friends and family, and let me know your opinions in the comments below, whether you be investing in Palantir or not, or any other thoughts on this mysterious company. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.